Hello, and welcome to another coding video from the Innisfil Idea Lab and Library. My name is Max. I'm a programmer here at the library, and I have something new to share with you. Um, over this and the next video, we're going to explore a way to make apps for your iPhone or Android device using a drag and drop code editor called Thunkable. So just as a super sneak preview to jump right to the end, um, here's kind of the app that we're going to make. And so in this app um, that, again, we've made completely with drag and drop tools, we're going to type something in and then have it have the app translated for us. And so if I type in, hello, how are you? Press translate. And we see the text shows up there in Spanish. Uh, the app has one more additional feature. We'll see if we have time to get to where if I press the share button, I can actually share that text in a uh, message. And so all this cool stuff we will try to do in thunkable.com. And so you can head there, uh, sign up for a free account, and you can get started um, pretty quickly. And so for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna assume you're gonna press pause right now, <laughs> make your account with Dunkable, and then we can just jump right in to uh, making the app. And so what does the creation kind of process look like? Well, that's this part here. Dunkable, as I mentioned, is a drag and drop interface, not only with the visual elements, that's what we're looking at here. We're looking at the, the visual elements of our app in the design tab. But also, um, if we go to blocks, um, we can see that everything here has been, you know, created with a block based editor. So it all sounds pretty cool. I think the only thing we have to do now is start from scratch. So I'm just going to go to my home page. Once we're here, and it's all loaded, we can just create new app. And so again, for this video, um, we're doing something pretty new and we're also trying out something new. So before I do anything here in the create new project pane, um, just to say we're going to click try it out over here. Thunkable is in the process of revamping their interface, making it all new. We want to try out the new version because we don't want to spend time learning the old version just to have to learn something new again in a couple months or what have you. Anyway, I'm going to call my app Translate Express. It's a great name for a Translate app. And that's really all we need to do. I'm going to press Create here. And then it puts me right into the creation interface. So there's nothing more terrifying than a blank screen. That's also true here. So the first thing we want to do is just fill it up with things that we know need to be there. We know we want the user to enter text. And in the Thunkable interface, there's a text input component. So I can click and drag that component and plop it there. We don't need to worry too much about it right now in terms of the code. We connect that code later in the blocks interface, but we can do some things here to make it nice for our user, make it a nice box, you know, to type in. And then for us as the programmers, what we should do is click the text in the top right corner which identifies its um, name in the editor. So if I click on that once, I can change that to text entry, I'm going to call it. This is where the user is going to enter text. And by naming it text entry, I'm reminding myself later what we're actually going to do with this block. And so um, that's good. The user doesn't see this, just we see this as the coders. And then the hint here is the text that shows up in the box to, to prompt the user to type. I'm just going to add an exclamation point, make it more friendly. And then everything else we can basically leave the same. There's some cool things you can check out later in terms of style, but for now, this is all good. Um, in order to activate the translation, we're probably going to have to press a button, one imagines. And so there's a button component here, thank goodness. We can drag that out and just plop it. So the button again, you know, let's make it nice and big for our users. Maybe right in the center of the screen. Perfect. Nothing wrong with a big button. Uh, and we can put in some text there that the user sees again. Um, you know, in my example, I had that just to be translate, you can make it whatever you like. 
Uh, since I made my button so big, I'm going to make my <laughs> text a little bigger. Bold it. There we go. Now everyone knows we mean business. Um, so the user sees that translate there. And again, this is for us at the top here, this little button text. As always, um, name that something that makes sense for you when you take a look at it in the block interface. So I'm going to say that's the translate button because you might have other buttons in your code later. And if they're all labeled button 1 to button 20, that'll be very confusing. So translate button is a great <laughs> name for that. And then finally, the user has to see the result, the translated result somehow. And for that, I'm going to click and drag over just a text label. It could possibly be shown in other ways. You know, I'm not sure. But a label is the easiest way, I think. So I'm going to click and drag that label downward and just plop it. By default, the label is super boring. It just says the word label on it. <laughs> and it's kind of just there in the top left hand corner. So first things first, let's give it a name for us. This is the, going to be the resulting translated text. So maybe we'll call this result. That's not too bad, I hope. That's for us. And for the user, you know, we don't want to confuse them with some text, but just to maybe indicate where text could be, I'm just going to put a dot, dot, dot here. Just to show, you know, maybe there's something coming or something that should be there. But we don't want to put, I don't know, or maybe you can put text like, your, you know, your translation will show here. That's not bad, actually. <laughs> Uh, in terms of text align, you know, we're going to center that just for fun. And I think everything else we can leave as it is default. You might notice there's a lot of style options down here in the bottom right. You can make the text other colors, you know, do other cool things, give it a border. I'm not really into borders personally, so we'll take that off. Um, so in this little kind of like tool square here, we can click the hand to pan just to kind of review all elements of our app. Maybe let me go back to the pointer if we want to move things. To me, this looks okay. We have a but sorry, a text entry box, the translate box, and a button and then a label, which is great. All these came from the component area here. And that's also all listed here in the screens section, you can have multiple screens in your app. Uh, right now we're just working with one screen and these are all the elements on our individual screen so with our visual elements in place we can go straight to blocks another blank screen another terrifying empty canvas that's okay the first thing you need to keep in mind is that any things that that happen in your app most likely happen as part of an event that is demonstrated by one of these C-shaped blocks. And so our translate button has a few different types of events. When you click on it, long click, touch down, touch up. Um, under control, there's a few other C-shaped ones that do other things, but the ones in control still need to be put inside just the big old C-shaped block. Uh, your screen has a few as well, but right now we're just gonna deal with when you press that translate button, what happens. And so I'm going to click and drag this out into our canvas. Maybe zoom in a bit just for visibility. So what happens when someone clicks the translate button in your app? We want to translate some text. What text do we want to translate? Probably text that your user entered in the text entry block. <laughs> and so we're going to scroll around here and just get the text entries text. We're going to place that aside right now. And so this little end puzzle piece has to be clicked into somewhere. And we are going to do that. But we just want to highlight the fact that what we want to get is the text from the text entry box. And we want to do some stuff with it. Probably we want to translate it. Interestingly, all the translate related features and blocks uh, come from the speech section under app features. So all the blocks are here under different categories. App feature category, speech section is what we want to do. 
we want to get a translation of some kind of text from one language to another language. So we're going to pop that out also. We see this is made of puzzle pieces. It all turned gray because again we're going to click that into something later. But just because I kind of wanted to start with what the user would do, we're just going to start with this text entry and pop it into here. Click. So we're going to make a translation of the text from the text entry box and we're going to translate it from English to Spanish. We can change that. Uh, if you know your user is going to start from a different language or maybe your user can uh, select what language they want to use. And we're going to translate that to let's say French this time. And we want to put this into something where it'll actually show up and make a result. And for us, you know, where did we say our translated text was going to end up? Well, in our result label, the power of naming. We named result <laughs> perfectly. And so it's easy for us to, you know, find it now. So our result label, we want to set results text to something. If we just set it to label, that will literally just be the word label. So we can take a quick preview with that, actually. If I press the play button, it shows me a live preview of my app in the web browser. And so I'm going to type here, uh, hello again. And when I press translate, it says the word label. Isn't that fun? <laughs> That'd be a pretty bad app, right? Uh, but just want to illustrate that our button works. The event happens. It um, applies what we've put into that C-shape block. But it, the C-shape block just says label. And so let's click in our super block from before. So our super block from before is the translation of text entries text. Plop. So we put it all in there. Maybe zoom out just one little bit. And so here, you click that button. We're going to set the results text to a translation of the text entry block, which we've translated from English to French. Yeah. So again, we can press the play button here and take a little preview in the browser. And we can say, hi, my name is Jeremy. Jeremy. Jack. Translate. Salut. Mon nom is Jack. Not too bad. My French is not great, but it translated it pretty good. Uh, let's set aside the fact I don't really know how to spell the name Jeremy. Anyway. Hello, my name is Jack, translated into French, and it's all pretty snazzy. We can go one step further pretty quickly uh, in terms of our ability to kind of preview this app anyway. And so if I close this preview here, um, we can take a look at what it might look like on a user's device. It is possible to go full all the way and install it on your device. If you're installing it on your own device, you can do it pretty easily on either platform, iOS or Android. If you're trying to put it into the App Store, that's a whole other series of videos. But just to say, you can download it on iOS and Android going through the process where it generates an actual app for you to personally install. But even easier than that, there's a way to just test it out live. And so here, we need, you know, as it indicates we're going to put in a secret code. <laughs> Where does the code come from? It comes from an app that you would download onto your device. Here I am on my iPhone. Uh, I'm in the App Store. I've searched for Thunkable Live in the App Store and we ended up here. Um, so, you know, again, pause the video, go to your App Store or the Play Store or Google Play, download the Thunkable Live app, come back here and you'll be right where I am where I can press the open button. <laughs> And so, um, in the Thunkable Live app, if you have made your account with a just email address, you go to email sign in. That's what I've done. And so we click email sign in, and there's that code I was talking about. So all I'm going to do now is type that code into that text box that we were oogling at just a few moments ago. I'm a great typer. There we go. And so now when I press connect in the uh, web interface, it shows up here in my phone that I am ready to live test the app. And so I can type in, you know, anything here again, maybe I'll type in um, today 
is a nice day? Question mark. Translate. And there it is. Aujourd'hui est une belle journée. Again, my French. Don't don't listen. Don't pay attention to my French. Uh, but it translated it, um, and it's all great. The translation happens using a web service. So when you type in uh, your text and press the translate button on the back end, Thunkable has already figured out for you um, a back end translation service that's kind of hooked in. So that's kind of what's happening in the background. Uh, but here, pretty seamless. We type in text, press the translate button, and it all works out. The nice part about this being a live preview is that if I go back into the app and I just click our drop down where it said French and change that to, yeah, let's go back to Spanish. Let's just say. And so now in my app, let's see how quickly it updates. Uh, in the app, if I type in some new text here, let's say today is a great day. And we'll be a little more certain about it, exclamation point. I'll press translate again. And there is the resulting text in Spanish. So I hope, as you can see, um, with just a few clicks on our computer screen on thunkable.com, we were able to make a pretty usable translation app. Of course, this is the point where someone like yourself or whoever, you know, might want to extend the app further by including that share button that I mentioned, or by, um, you know, making it possible to change languages from within the app itself, maybe with like a slider, or, uh, you know, something fun like that. If you do make any of those enhancements, I would definitely love it if you shared it with the library. So we can all kind of, um, you know, acknowledge your hard work and all that. And so I do hope you take on that challenge. And I super hope you come and join us for the next video. And bye-bye for now.